So in this lecture we're going to talk about the Beltrami-Mitchell equations. And basically that's a combination of equilibrium and compatibility for, in our case, conditions of linear elastic isotropic small deformation situations. There's going to be a fair amount of algebra in this and what I'll probably end up doing is uh, pausing the video and putting the page up with the equations on it for, the, uh, for some of it just so uh, because it just takes a lot of time and there's not a whole lot to talk about as I write these equations down. But uh, let's start writing some of our basic equations. We know now that linear elastic Hooke's law for an isotropic material has a form that looks like this in terms of strain of strain in terms of stress. So epsilon ij is equal to 1 plus nu over e sigma ij minus nu over E sigma kk, which is the trace of the stress tensor. So I'm going to call it now I1 Kronecker delta ij. There's so another different ways to write that, uh, but in this format I'm going to use the notation I1. Well, let's just write down how all of our strain equations. We have six different unique strains. And now here I'm going to go into coordinate strains. So for example, epsilon x is going to be equal to, if I factor out the 1 over e, it's going to be a 1 plus nu sigma x minus nu i1. And I know I can simplify this even further, but I do want to leave it in this format with the, with the i, the trace of the stress tensor, in there. I have similar equations for epsilon y and epsilon z. In this case, it's going to be 1 plus nu sigma y minus nu i1 and 1 over e, 1 plus nu sigma z minus nu i1. And in addition to that, let's write down our shearing strains. And in this case, I'm going to use our engineering shearing strains. So it's tau over g, the shear modulus, but I want to write this in terms of E and nu. I'm going to keep just those two elastic constants. So we have an expression for gamma xy, gamma xz, and gamma yz. Now I know I've used tons of different notations and I've talked about tensor strains and shear, uh, tensor shearing strains and engineering shearing strains and I'm flipping among all these different notations and different ways of writing things. Um, it's, um, it's kind of an immersive process I guess. If I only did one type of notation then uh, you may not recognize things if I uh, if you were to see them in another type of notation later on. So in a way we're kind of learning all the different types of ways of writing these things kind of kind of all at once. But that's okay. Now in addition to um, the stress strain relations we can write down our equilibrium relations. Now the equilibrium equations then are going to be like sigma i j comma j plus b i is equal to zero. And in terms of our coordinate strains, uh, this would be expanded out as, here's a summation here, partial of sigma x with respect to x plus partial of tau x y 
respect to y plus the partial of tau xz with respect to z plus a body force term in the x direction equal to zero. And we have a total of three equilibrium equations. Now here I'm using tau for the shearing stress, so let me stick with that. Be like the partial of tau xy with respect to x plus sigma y, partial of sigma y with respect to y, plus the partial of tau yz with respect to z, plus a body force in the y direction equal to zero. And likewise for the last one, partial of tau xz with respect to x, plus the partial of tau yz with respect to y plus partial of sigma z with respect to z plus a body force in the z direction equal to zero. We have strain displacement. Epsilon ij is equal to one half partial of ui with respect to xj plus the partial of uj with respect to xi. We have our six equations for our six different strain components. Again, looking at small displacements. And then we have our compatibility equations. We have a total of six of these. These involve second partial derivatives of our strain components with respect to our coordinates. And one of our equations will look like this. Second partial of the normal strain epsilon x with to y twice plus par second partial of epsilon y with x twice is equal to second partial of gamma xy with respect to x and y. And then we get two similar equations. So we can have an equation for y and z. We can have an equation for x and z. Uh, I guess let's go ahead and write those down. And again, this is in terms of engineering shearing strain. I'm trying to be super careful here and not make mistakes with any of these uh, subscripts. But if I do, you know, just please let me know. Right, so we have those three, and then we also have others that look like slightly different format. I'm going to scoot over here just a little bit to write these down. We have two times second partial derivative of epsilon x with respect to y and z plus the second partial of gamma yz with respect to x twice is equal to the second partial derivative of gamma xz with respect to x and y plus second partial of gamma xy with respect to x and z. And uh, I'm running out of room here, so I'm just going to write down in 
to other similar equations where we cycle through the subscripts. All right, let me save this page and then uh, we'll write a few more things down. All right, now here's what we're going to do next. We're going to start with this compatibility equation. And we're going to put into it our strains from our stress strain relations. And so now we're going to have compatibility in terms of stresses. Um, but then we're also going to use our equilibrium equations as well. And there's going to be a good bit of algebra. Now, I won't be able to um, uh, flash this page up. Uh, maybe, maybe I can figure out a way to do that. Um, but at this point, if I give you these uh, files, these uh, PDFs, these these uh, screens, you may want to print this page out so you have all these equations handy if you want to follow along with what we're doing next. All right, so here is our first compatibility equation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, the stress-strain relations that I've identified in red, that I've circled, I'm going to put that into the compatibility equation. So on the left-hand side, you know, I have a lot of constants, so we don't have to worry about those very much. On the left-hand side, I'm going to have a 1 over E times the entire quantity, and I'm going to have a 1 plus nu I'm going to have the second partial of sigma x with respect to y twice. I'm going to have a minus nu second partial of i1 with respect to y twice. Now, remember I said I wanted to leave this in terms of i1. i1 does have sigma x in it. It's got some other things, but I want to leave it uh, in terms of i1. And we'll see why at the very end of all of this algebra that we're going to do. So that's the first term. So then the second term is second partial of epsilon y with respect to x twice. So I'm going to have a very similar look looking term. So I'm going to put sigma y in here, the stress strain relations for that relate epsilon y to sigma y and the other stresses. I'm going to have 1 over e, same kind of looking term, 1 plus nu I'm going to have the second partial of sigma y with respect to y, uh, whoops, sorry, with respect to x twice. And then we have a minus nu, second partial of i1 with respect to x twice. And on the right hand side, we have our shear term. We're going to write that in terms of the stress, tau xy. So we're going to have 2 times 1 plus nu over e, second partial derivative of tau xy with respect to x and y. Alright, <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply everything by e. and then I'm going to group like terms. So what I mean by that is I have a 1 plus nu, a couple of terms that look like that. One of the terms is going to be the second partial of sigma x with respect to y twice. 
Another term is going to be a second partial of sigma y with respect to x twice. I'm going to have some terms with a minus nu in it. The second partial of i1 with respect to y twice and the second partial of i1 with respect to x twice. And then on the right hand side, since I've multiplied everything by e, I've got 2, 1 plus nu, second partial of tau xy with respect to x and with respect to y. Now what I really want to do is I want to get rid of that tau xy. I want an entire equation only in terms of second partials of sigma x and sigma y. Where that's going to come from is through equilibrium. So let's flash back to the previous page. Look at our equilibrium equation. So we have this uh, term here that has a tau xy in it. And we have another term um, here, the second one, that also has a tau xy in there. I'm going to label this equation little a. Okay, so the first of our equilibrium equations will be the partial of sigma x with respect to x plus the partial of tau xy with respect to y plus the partial of tau xz with respect to z plus a body force in the x or I've called it in my notes the one direction. So that will give me that the partial of tau xy with respect to y is equal to minus all these different terms. We have a similar expression for our second equilibrium equation that we can get. So we have another expression. Now this one's going to be the um, partial of tau xy with respect to x. It's going to be equal to minus partial of sigma y with respect to y minus the partial of tau xz, uh, tau yz, sorry. With respect to z and then we're going to have a minus b2. Okay, I'm going to label this equation little one and this equation little two. All right, now what I'm going to do next is I have the equations little one and little two. I'm going to take the first one and take the partial derivative of that with respect to x. And I'm going to take the second one, I'm going to take the partial derivative of that one with respect to y. When I add them together, that's going to give me two second partial derivatives of tau xy with respect to x and y. Let me do that on a, a new page. Okay, so the second partial of tau xy with respect to x and y is equal to minus the second partial derivative of sigma x with respect to x twice minus the second partial derivative of tau xz with respect to x and z 
minus the partial derivative of b1 with respect to x. And then from the second equation, we're going to have the second partial of tau xy with respect to x and y equal to minus the second partial of sigma x with respect to y twice minus the second partial of tau yz with respect to y and z minus b2 with respect to y. Now we have one more equilibrium equation it says that the partial derivative of tau xz with respect to x plus the partial derivative of tau yz with respect to y plus the partial derivative of sigma z with respect to z plus my third body force term is equal to zero. What we're going to do is we're going to take the partial derivative of this equation with respect to z. So we're going to have the second partial of tau xz with respect to x in z. We'll have the partial derivative tau yz with respect to y in z. We're going to have the second partial of sigma z with respect to z twice. We'll have a plus partial of b3 with respect to z and it's going to be equal to zero. So from that, <clears throat> what I'm going to be able to do is say that the second partial of sigma z with respect to z twice plus partial derivative of body force three with respect to z is equal to minus second partial of tau x z with respect to x and z in a minus second partial of tau yz with respect to y and z. I'm going to label this equation 3. Now, uh, let's see here. These terms should look pretty familiar. That's uh, one of these in one of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one and two together. And I'm going to use equation three. So I'm going to have two second partials of tau xy with respect to x and y. That's going to be equal to a minus second partial of sigma x with respect to x twice and a minus second partial of sigma this one should have been a sigma y with respect to y twice And then I'm going to have a plus second partial of sigma z with respect to z twice plus partial of b3 with respect to z. And then I'm going to have the minus partial of b1 with respect to x and a minus a partial of b2 with respect to y. All right, so let's see where we're at. 
Now, what I'm basically got is the right hand side ready. I do need to multiply it by 1 plus nu. I'm going to take the term that I just got, I'm going to multiply it by 1 plus nu, and then I'm going to set it equal to these terms that I have here in equation little a. So this term right here, I'm going to multiply it by 1 plus nu, and I'm going to insert in equation A. So on the left hand side, I got a 1 plus nu, second partial of sigma x with respect to y twice, plus the second partial of sigma y with respect to x twice. I have a minus nu times, I'm going to write it this way, second partial of i1 with respect to x twice, plus the second partial of i one with respect to y twice and that's equal to on the right hand side one plus nu times the big quantity minus second partial of sigma x with respect to x twice minus second partial of sigma y with respect to y twice plus second partial of sigma z with respect to z twice plus these body force terms this one being positive and the other two being negative now what I'm going to do is I'm going to group similar terms I have 1 plus nu multiplied by a bunch of different things. Second partial of sigma x with respect to x twice. I've got a second partial of sigma y with respect to y twice when I move this over here. I'm going to have a second partial of sigma y with respect to... Uh, this, here's a second partial of sigma x with respect to y twice. That would be this term. I have the second partial of sigma x with respect to x twice. That's this term. I have the second partial of sigma y with respect to x twice. That's the term on the left hand side. And then I have a second partial of sigma y with respect to y twice that comes from uh, this term on the right hand side. I have minus nu times these terms that have first invariant of the stress tensor. I have a term with sigma z in it. And then all of that is equal to the terms that are left that involve the body forces. Alright, now at this point, let's deal with the I1. Let's deal with the invariant, first invariant of the stress tensor. It's sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z. So the second invariant of I1 with respect to x twice is going to be equal to this. Okay. 
We're just taking the second partial derivative of each of those terms with respect to x. And likewise, if we do the same thing with two partial derivatives with respect to y, then we're going to get all of those terms, their partial derivatives with respect to y. Alright, let's save this page. Alright, now in these equations, you may notice that I have, um, oh, this should be a second partial right here. I have these terms and uh, these terms. I'm going to solve for those terms. So I've got second partial of sigma x with respect to x twice plus the second partial of sigma y with respect to x twice is equal to the second partial of i1 with respect to x twice minus the second partial of sigma z with respect to x twice. And then for the other equation, second partial of sigma x with respect to y twice plus the second partial of sigma y with respect to x twice is equal to the second partial of i1 with respect to oops this should have been a y right here it's easy to get a little off on the subscripts it's equal to the second partial of i1 with respect to y twice minus the second partial of sigma z with respect to y twice. Right. Now what I can do if I can find the right uh, screen here is in this equation use my pen uh, let's see in this equation right here I'm going to be able to make those substitutions for these two terms here's the second partial sigma x with respect to x twice here's the second partial sigma y with respect to x twice that's going to be one of the terms and then the other term is going to be the second partial sigma x with respect to y twice and the second partial sigma y with respect to y twice. Okay. So let me go back here. We've got a one plus new. We got the second partial of I one with respect to x twice minus the second partial of sigma z with respect to x twice plus the second partial of i1 with respect to y twice minus the second partial of sigma z with respect to y twice then we have our minus nu second partial of i1 with respect to x twice plus the second partial of i1 with respect to y twice and then we have our minus 1 plus nu second partial of sigma z with respect to z twice and then that's all equal to the 1 plus nu and then the body force terms Now at this point, 
we can combine some terms. Notice that I have a 1 plus nu times a second partial i with respect to x twice. Then I also have a minus nu second partial i with respect to x twice. So those will annihilate. What I'm left with is a second partial of i1 with respect to x twice and a second partial of i1 with respect to y twice. I can move my body force terms over to the Well, let's see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to group my second partials of sigma z over to the left-hand side. So I have a minus 1 plus nu times, okay, I have uh, a second partial of sigma z with respect to z twice. I factored out the negative sign, so I'm going to have a positive second partial of sigma z with respect to x twice and a positive second partial of sigma z with respect to y twice. Now this stuff over here, I'll we'll call this the right hand side, and this stuff right here, I'm going to call the left-hand side. So the left-hand side and the right-hand side are equal. And let me save this here, and then we'll take the next step. Okay, so what I'm going to do next, then, is I'm going to add and subtract a common term. It's going to be the second partial of I1 with respect to Z twice. So I'm going to add it. And if I look at this grouping, I have the second partial of I1 with respect to X twice and Y twice and Z twice. Well, what that is, is that is a del squared I1 when I add that term in. Now, since I added that term in, I'm also going to have to subtract that term. If I look at the term in the brackets with the sigma z, what that is, is that's a del squared sigma z. And that's all equal to the right hand side, which is equal to one plus nu, it this way. Let's get rid of that big bracket here. 1 plus nu times partial of b3 with respect to z minus the partial of b1 with respect to x minus the partial of b2 with respect to y. Okay, so that's kind of, uh, it's not, we're not at the end yet. But we're well on our way now. Let me save this, and then we'll talk about the next steps. All right, now, at this point, we could have used two other pair of equations, and also two other pair of equations, and we could have gotten something very similar. I'm going to go ahead and write those down. All right, so here we have all of these equations. Kind of see the symmetry in them. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add them all together.
So we're going to have 3 del squared i1 We're going to have a minus del squared i1 when we add the three individual terms together. We're going to have a minus 1 plus nu. Those all add up to be a del squared i1. And on the right hand side, factoring out the negative with minus 1 plus nu, we're left with all positive terms. Now, again, factoring out the negative. Partial of b1 with respect to x plus the partial of b2 with respect to y plus the partial of b3 with respect to z. And this will be our new right-hand side. We can reduce this down a little bit. We're going to end up with a del squared i1 minus a new del squared i1. It's equal to that same right-hand side. Or factoring out the del squared i1, we get a 1 minus new del squared i1 is equal to the right-hand side which we can also write a little bit more compactly, minus 1 plus nu. We can use our index notation if we would like. Partial of bi with respect to xi, where we have the implied summation notation. All right, need a little more room. Putting all the body force terms on one side and just leaving the uh, the I1 alone. We're going to have a del squared I1 is equal to a minus 1 plus nu over 1 minus nu. And then we have the uh, index notation summation partial of bi with respect to xi. All right, now, let's see if I can find one of my equations here. I didn't label it. But let's go back and look at uh, previous page. And call this one little b. And we're going to put that into that equation. We have an expression For that and we're going to solve for del squared sigma x. So this term right here we're going to solve for del squared sigma x. Okay, so let's go back to this page. So we'll have a del squared sigma x. We're going to end up with a plus 1 over nu, 1 over 1 plus nu. Second partial of i1 with respect to x twice. And it's equal to some stuff on the right hand side. 
minus 1 plus nu over 1 plus nu Okay, we're getting a uh, common denominator here. So then I'll have a partial of B1 with respect to X minus the partial of B2 with respect to Y minus the partial of B3 with respect to Z. Then I'll have a plus, a minus 1 plus nu over 1 minus nu, and a 1 plus nu. And then I'll have the partial of bi with respect to xi. All right, we got a little bit to go yet, so hang in there. This whole thing I'm going to call the right-hand side. And now I'm going to work with the right-hand side. Let me get a new page. All right. <clears throat> Working with the right hand side, grouping terms, and then adding and subtracting the term minus new partial of B1 with respect to X. Again, working with these terms, algebra, algebra, algebra. Uh, even more algebra coming up. All right, so with the continuation of the algebra on the right-hand side, we can work that down, and finally we get to del squared sigma x plus 1 over 1 plus nu times second partial of i1 with respect to x twice is equal to minus nu over 1 minus nu. I have a summation partial of b sub i with respect to x sub i minus 2 partial of b1 with respect to x1, and we get two similar equations. We also get equations for shear that look like this. Second partial of tau xy, or excuse me, the del squared tau xy plus 1 over 1 plus nu. Second partial of i1 with respect to x and y is equal to a minus partial of b1 with respect to y plus the partial of b2 with respect to x and also two similar equations for the other shear stresses. Let me save this page and we'll write down the general equation. del squared sigma ij plus 1 over 1 plus nu second partial of i1 with respect to x sub i and x sub j is equal to minus nu over 1 minus nu partial of bm with respect to xm Kronecker delta ij minus partial of b sub i with respect to x sub j plus partial of b sub j with respect to x sub i. All right, so finally what we have are the Beltrami-Mitchell equations. Now, in cases where body forces are constant or can be, can be neglected, we can reduce this down.
do del squared sigma ij plus 1 over 1 plus nu second partial of i1 with respect to xi and xj. Now, we've done a ton of algebra. Um, feel free to go through and check it. Um, there are some restrictions that we have here. We have a linear elastic isotropic material. Uh, we do have a small deformation theory. We have a symmetric stress tensor. And these, this is for objects in equilibrium. Okay, we use our equilibrium equations, not our general differential equations of motion. Um, and uh, we do have compatible deformations. All right, so I almost made it within 50 minutes, but uh, there is just a ton of algebra in all of this. And we'll, we'll kind of follow up with just a short description of the boundary value problems of elasticity in a little bit.